Welcome to Zoo Babies, where we greet some of the world's most cuddly and courageous new creatures. First up on Zoo Babies, let's say hello to baby Farahi, the chimpanzee. It hasn't taken him long to get into the swing of life with his family at Sydney's Taronga Zoo. He's still a little unsteady on his feet, but it only took a few days until he was hanging out with his mother Kuma in the sunshine. Taronga Zoo has 16 chimpanzees. Fifi is the oldest at 54 years, and she's also the most respected female in the group and is reported to have raised 10 young chimps on her own. Along with fellow apes, the orangutans, chimpanzees are known to be our closest living relatives. Like us, they communicate through gestures and facial expressions. They are very intelligent animals who use tools to get food and teamwork tactics to hunt prey. In the wild, the chimps are led by a dominant male and family groups will travel during the day and build nests to sleep in at night. Chimps are among the noisiest of all wild animals and use a complicated system of sounds to communicate with each other. A loud ra call, which can be heard more than a mile away, warns of something unusual or disturbing. They hoot, scream, grunt and drum on hollow trees with the flat of their hands, sometimes for hours. Chimps like to touch each other a great deal, and they'll often kiss when they meet. They also hold hands and groom each other. And an adult chimp will often have a special friend or companion with whom it spends a lot of its time. Female chimps are known for giving their young a great deal of attention, and they'll even help each other with babysitting chores. Older chimps in the group are usually quite patient with energetic youngsters. At the end of the day, the chimps enjoy feeding on their principal diet of all kinds of fruits. But they'll also eat leaves, buds and blossoms. In all, their diet can consist of up to 80 different plant foods. At just over 10 weeks old, this giraffe stands much taller than most babies of its own age. He's nine feet tall, and they call him Refu, a Kiswahili name translated into English as the tall one. Refu doesn't live in the bush anymore. He lives in an animal park in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, where he can't be preyed upon by lions or hyenas. Refu lost his mother just after he was born, so he has never experienced the maternal bond between mother and calf, which normally lasts almost two years. Wildlife services say Refu will stay at the animal park for the rest of his life. He's a Rothschild giraffe, and they are endangered in Kenya. They faced near extinction nearly 30 years ago because of loss of habitat and illegal hunting. Rothschild giraffes are deep brown in color and have rectangular spots with irregular shaped cream lines. As well as being very tall, all giraffes have very long tongues, which they use to lap up lots of water so they can spend time in dry areas. He was only five days old, so I doubt even he knows what it was to be in the field, actually. So he's, uh, right now he knows us as his first parents. But life isn't too lonely at the wildlife park. The tall, lanky giraffe has already made friends at the orphanage, hanging out with an ostrich. Like the giraffe, the ostrich has a very long neck, so they shouldn't have any trouble finding each other in the park. An Indian family has adopted an abandoned wild sloth bear cub in eastern Orissa. The two-year-old cub strayed into Tanajaga hamlet along with its mother, 
but was left behind because it was so small. A family at Talajaga has since adopted the bear cub and christened it Krishna, after the Hindu god of the same name. The family did try to release it back into the forest, but the bear kept coming back demanding milk. Bears have a very good sense of smell, and despite their heavy build, they're excellent climbers and swimmers. Krishna is now a part of the family, and the Pertus treat him like their own son. Although he's a wild animal, he's very gentle and docile, and is quite a hit with the villagers. Now let's welcome little Dabao, an 11-year-old female golden monkey and her two male twins. The twin golden monkeys, who are now in very good condition, weigh half a kilogram each and are just 20 centimeters tall. Golden monkeys are a rare species in the world and are listed under priority state protection in China. They inhabit mainly the mountainous areas in Sichuan, Gansu, and Hubei. There are only about 10,000 in the wild, and since the group is relatively small, it's very rare to find twin golden monkeys. They live up in trees and rarely go down to the ground. In the wild, they move about in the daytime, usually in large groups. They like to feed on young leaves. And once in a while, they'll prey on young birds or eggs and insects. The male monkey from nape to tail dock has light brown coat hair mixed with golden long hair and a flamboyant color. The female has no golden hair, but she does have very long and sharp teeth. The mother holds on to her babies protectively, making sure that they're well looked after. The possibility of the birth of twin golden monkeys averages one per 10,000. The total amount of golden monkeys is only about 10,000, so it makes the possibility of the birth of twins even lower than humans. It's more difficult for them to have twins, in fact, especially in the wild. It's even rare within an artificial reservation environment. The zoo is especially excited because the monkey twins have been born in the Chinese year of the monkey. We have monkey twins in the year of the monkey, a pair of male twins. I feel our happiness has been doubled. <laughs> there are 35 golden monkeys in the park. Before the twins were born, the park also welcomed another two single birth baby golden monkeys earlier in the year. It seems that the year of the monkey is a very lucky one for golden monkeys. In order to help Dabao's mother produce more milk, keepers had provided nutritious food such as Chinese dates, milk powder, walnuts and peanuts. Meanwhile, over in Israel, zookeepers suspected some monkey business after Maya, a 24-year-old chimpanzee, suddenly gave birth to her own twins. The happy event at Jerusalem's biblical zoo caught everyone by surprise. Nobody had even noticed that Maya was pregnant, and Og and Gremlin, the only adult males among 11 chimps at the facility, were sterilized years ago, which meant that they could not make any female chimps pregnant. A search for the father found that a very mature seven-year-old chimp called Nikki had reached puberty early and was probably having the run of the primate's house. The zoo thought Nikki was too young to get anybody pregnant, but that was not the case. Two zoos in Germany proudly presented their newest offspring to the public recently. Two-week-old giraffe Ulla is the newest star of Berlin's Tierpark. 
the daughter of Mother Lottie and Father Alexander, has delighted her keeper, Enrico Rodiga. Ulla is the ninth member of the giraffe family in the tear park and can be seen running around the large pen with the rest of her relatives when she's not snacking or foraging for food. Ulla will grow up to be one of the tallest land animals. When she's fully grown, she'll be able to look into a second-story window without even having to stand on tiptoes. Giraffes spend most of their day eating because they get just a few leaves in each bite. Their favorite leaves are from the acacia tree. Acacia trees have long thorns that keep most animals from eating their leaves. But those thorns don't stop the giraffes, who simply use their 18-inch tongues to reach around the thorns. They also have thick, sticky saliva that coats any thorns they might swallow. At the same time, Cologne Zoo was busy wowing the media with their newest offspring. Charlie, Linus and Lucy, the red ruffed lima triplets, have been causing much excitement at the zoo. The two boys and one girl spent their first three weeks safely snuggled in a nest built by their mother. This is 11-year-old mother Tahina's fourth litter with 10-year-old father Octave. In the wild, red rough lima live in Madagascar. It's special because it's such an endangered species. It's important that we continue to breed them in the zoo and that there is a coordinated effort to breed them. Our couple here are especially important because we have a female which is not as well represented in the international population. Photographers were on hand to take lots of pictures of the triplets who were busy munching on some of their favorite foods like flowers, leaves and insects. Small lemurs like these are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day. We've seen chimpanzees do many tricks on zoo babies, such as climbing ladders and painting. But not elephants. Well, it's never too early to learn, especially when it comes to painting. That's what several elephant trainers in Japan thought and decided to put their idea into practice. They took a couple of Indian elephants, Puri and Terry, already well known for their artistry, and their daughter, one-year-old Yumika, to jointly display their talent for brush painting at a press review at the Ichihara Elephant Kingdom Zoo near Tokyo. It is not rare for trained elephants to paint with their trunks, but the zoo claims that this is the world's first painting done by a whole family. To begin with, Yumika was nervous and reluctant to paint, but she was helped along by her Thai trainer. Her father, Terry, is reputed to be very good at painting, though her mother, Puri, is, honestly saying, poor as an artist. So considering this, she seems to have inherited traits from her father rather than her mother. Elephant Kingdom general manager Sayuri Sakamoto admitted the one-year-old calf was not ready to display her abilities, although she's previously shown some natural painting talent without any training. However, the elephant seemed to enjoy holding the paintbrush in its trunk and splashing many different colors on the canvas. While some elephants are intelligent enough to paint a simple object such as a flower if they are trained, Sakamoto says the elephant family could paint freely. An elephant's trunk is a highly sensitive organ with over 100,000 muscles. They can get very heavy and it's not uncommon to see elephants resting them over their tusk. Elephants also cry, play, and have incredible memories. They've also been said to laugh. By watching their family collaborate through painting, I hope people can understand how well they communicate and notice the importance of their own family communication. The show in which the elephants will perform will become a regular public event.
Now let's take a look at this crowned solitary eagle, which is typically known simply as the crowned eagle. It's an endangered bird of prey from eastern and central South America. Buenos Aires Sioux was preparing to release and continue monitoring the eagle named Champalwi back into its natural habitat as part of an effort to conserve the endangered bird of prey. The crowned eagle has pale grey plumage and as of 2004, only 1,000 of them remain in the world. Shanpalwi is a young female eagle and was found by a local resident who turned her over to the Mendoza Fauna Union. The eagle was then given to the Buenos Aires Zoo, where she underwent 14 months of rehabilitation and preparation to re-enter her natural habitat. The flying of eagles in a forest is a sign that it's still thriving. This is zookeeper Alexander Nolte from Duisburg Zoo in Germany. And he's delighted to be introducing a very special new arrival in the shape of a baby male gorilla. Alexander says that this baby's mother is doing a great job looking after the little one. The zoo has had gorillas for almost 70 years and has been waiting patiently for the apes to start breeding. The zoo has brought animals from Australia and England to help produce a baby. Despite their large size, gorillas are peaceful and sociable. They eat up to 200 types of leaves, flowers, fruit and fungus. There is certainly something very human about them, the way they behave. But there's also something somber, because they have such a dark face. It's hard to see their expressions. And the males, of course, are big and sturdy. It makes you think of King Kong and something dangerous. But they're really gentle, very peaceful. They take good care of their family members. You can see that since the baby has arrived, the male is relaxed. The other females are looking at what the mother is doing with the baby. And it's good, because they're learning how it works. Giant panda Tan Tan was the star of Kobe's Oji Zoo after she successfully gave birth to Japan's first baby panda in 20 years as a result of artificial insemination. The moment of the birth was captured on tape by zoo officials, who were watching with bated breath as Tan Tan's maternal instincts kicked in. Tan Tan narrowly avoided walking on her nine-inch baby, but the 12-year-old mother finally figured out how to grab the wriggling white baby with her jaws and bring it closer so it could suckle. Tan Tan also gave birth last summer in the zoo's fifth insemination attempt, but the baby was stillborn. This little cub has not yet been named, and its sex has not been confirmed. The zoo expects the baby panda to make its public debut after three months, and it will eventually be returned to China, where its parents came from. Including the newest addition, there are ten giant pandas in Japan, all on lease or born from other pandas from China. The pandas have been lent to Japan for joint research on breeding and preservation. Scientists don't know exactly why these unusual bears are black and white. But some people think that it's because the bold colouring of their fur provides great camouflage in the wild. The panda's thick and woolly coat keeps it warm in the cool forests of its habitat. This baby panda will grow up to have large molar teeth and strong jaw muscles, which will help it crush tough bamboo. It's one big happy family in the orangutan enclosure at the zoo in Hamburg. Third-time mother Toba has given birth to a little boy, who was recently named Kejutan. Only three months later, Toba became a grandmother, because her eldest daughter Janina gave birth to a little female called Harta. And there have been two more babies born this year. 
Female orangutans have their first baby at about 14 to 15 years old. Pregnancy lasts for eight and a half months. And young orangutans have a lot to learn to survive in the forest and will stay with their mother until they are about seven or eight years old. This period of dependency is longer than any other primates apart from humans. Female orangutans only have one baby every eight years and will have three or four in their lifetime. Zookeeper Tanya Evers takes care of the enclosure and keeps a close eye on the babies. They have only just started developing. We have one baby that will have its first birthday soon. And this one is quite busy learning how to climb and feed. The great thing about having four babies is that they will all have playmates of their own age. The World Wildlife Fund has announced one of its main issues is the protection of the orangutan, which is a critically endangered species. To raise awareness of the plight of these animals, the World Wildlife Fund will install information points about them in zoos across Germany. And one of the two youngest orangutan babies will be named publicly in order to draw attention to the fact that these large primates are on the verge of extinction. The enclosure is one of the most spacious and modern ones in the world and aims to simulate the natural habitat of Southeast Asia. It's just the mother who takes care of her baby. They are very nurturing. At the beginning, they carry the babies everywhere. They act very gently and careful. In the wild, orangutans may live up to 45 years or more. The oldest captive orangutan was a male named Goas at the Philadelphia Zoo, who lived until he was 58. We are usually not there when the mother gives birth. It usually happens late in the evening, at night, or very early in the morning. We have one mother who had her baby during the day, but that is very rare. Within half an hour, the baby was born. We normally don't really have to help the mother. Orangutans are a species of great ape, along with gorillas, chimpanzees and bonobos. The great apes are a group of mammals that all have large brains, forward-facing eyes and gripping hands. Humans are also great apes. In fact, we share 96.4% of our genetic makeup with orangutans. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs.